Cold Calling doesn't work. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Thomas Klein from Klein Marketing Consulting and how many times do I get the sentence Thomas, cold calling doesn't work or it doesn't work anymore. Here are the three most important points that you need to think about when it comes to cold calling a new business generation. There is so much volume in new business generation going on in this world, like billions and billions of euros and dollars all over the place. So a new business generation is not a question of it works or not, it's a question of whether you understand what it takes to make a real impact a new business coming into your business. And uh, here are the three most important points that I think to consider. The first is the USP. It's as simple as that. Have you ever really thought about deeply about your USP? The USP you are trying to bring across to your client. Because you have to understand that the market is very dynamic and it's very fast and it's, it's getting faster every year. And uh, IT security was such a runner, such a, such a burning market like up until two or three years ago and now like everybody is trying to sell a piece in, into IT security. Uh, you call them guys up and say well I tried to sell you some service or product, uh, IT security product. They say well you're one, of, uh, one out of 20 guys that called me just today. So what is your USP? So if you can't tell me the USP, if you have, no, have made no, any thoughts about your USP, you're not gonna be. You're not gonna get the appointment. You know, so there will be no new business, right? And here's one tip about the USP. Try and be very specific about how you enter into um, telephone uh, telephone phone conversation with a decision maker, because if you're not specific, the chances are, are like like 99% of the time that this is going to result in a very fruitful conversation. Because you have to position yourself as an expert out there in the IT world. If you will not be able to position yourself as an expert, then people are not going to uh, be aware that no one's going to take any time to listen to what you got to say because there's too many, just too many people out there, too many service providers, IT people trying to sell something, right? So you need, you need to be very specific. You need to think about your product, your market, and the, I, I come to the second point very, very shortly, to really know your market. You have to know your market. And you have to know your product and your market, and then you need to be able to match the, the two. So, for example, you're trying to uh, sell a piece of Microsoft, and you know exactly, okay, this and this and this and this and this and this and this. These are the, 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 the areas in this product of Microsoft where a lot of people feel uncomfortable. There, there's a lot of... Uh, well, there's some criticism going on, they, they're not, not sure how to implement it, they're not sure how to uh, connect it uh, with the current infrastructure. So you have to know, you have to have a really good set of Q&A's basically. You have to know the just-in-time need of what your market has, or the, the, the decision makers you're trying to acquire. Um, for, a specific, for each specific product you're trying to sell. So this is the second point, really, you really have to know your market, you really have to know your market. I had a client once and he tried to sell uh, a minimum 2 million euro product of SAP into the Swiss market. So this was a product that is basically an e-shop solution, really high end, so um, you need to spend at least a million euros to implement this kind of solution. So Switzerland isn't that big, so you only have like a couple of hundred companies there that actually have a total revenue that will be actually able to afford such a solution. And out of these couple of hundred, there's only a few, there's a subset of 
even fewer companies that have the need of an e-commerce solution. So the subset of a subset is just a, f a bunch of companies that are actually um, the uh, part of your target audience. You can co actually call up where it makes where it makes sense that you call up and try to sell this product, right? So you really have to know your market because if you then think, okay, I want like 100 leads a year out of this market and there's only like 80 companies within your target audience that suited for the type of product or service you're trying to sell, then the 800, the 100 leads are not gonna happen, right? So you really need to go know your market. This is really, really, really important, yeah? Before you start, maybe even if you hire like a specialist, like finance specialist like we are, you know, tell them that you try to enter a certain market, but you don't, you're not really sure. Be honest with them and say, you're not really sure if, 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 the poten if this market has the potential that we would like, um, that we think that this market has. So make us, a, make us a research, you know, invest some, a couple of weeks or months uh, and test this market out. And, and do some research on this market, right? And um, this is also a really, really makes also a lot of sense, you know. And if you're not sure about a certain market for a specific, very specific product or service, test it, give it, give it a, give it a trial. But um, don't expect, without knowing the market, a certain sort of result that is totally unrealistic. And then after a year, you think like, okay, call, calling doesn't work or a new business generation doesn't work. That's, that's, that's just bullshit. That's just nonsense, right? You didn't do ho your homework and really getting to know the market, your market up front, very, very in depth and, and match it to the service and product that you got to offer, right? So make sure you do your homework before you and go into a market. And the third is always approach a specialist. Because, you know, I made another video here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you up here. Um, these two guys, usually every company has them um, like closes and developers. Um, but this year, good finders are really hard to find, and they're very often. Sometimes I'm not quite sure why, but they're very often they, they're not paid that well. So even the, the good finders, they, I mean, oh, even like new, new guys here, new finders, to develop them, you need to give them incentives. Because you need to go through a lot of, you need to dig a lot of hard work here. You need to dig a lot of shit sometimes, you know, to get actually to the, to the result. Uh, to the sales that you want to get go, you know, before even these guys here get busy, right? So you need to really take care of these guys here, give them, you know, the right incentive, right? Um, don't don't tell them I only pay you on commission because they're gonna starve to death before they they see the first penny, right? So this is not the way, right? So you can give a, a closer a good portion of commission because he already gets the leads in, right? All he needs to do is to close the client, right? So, but not this guy here. I have another video here where I explain a situation where uh, a client that has already been my client successfully and then wanted to switch to like a few commission-based model with me on the finder's basis. So bringing new clients on a pure commission base, it's nonsense. It's not going to work, right? Because this is the part of the entire sales team. They, do, they have the most effort for the longest period of time until the return investment is going to be, is going to happen, right? So these are the guys, usually business development managers, and I know this when I, when I lived, used to live in the UK, in London, yeah? These guys, they have usually a giant fixed sum, uh, fixed income, and then a small commission. And these guys, they have a huge commission. And yeah, usually 50-50 split, so, so to say, right? And then these guys, again, again, a higher fix and a shorter commission, right? But these guys don't pay them just commission. They're gonna starve, right? In the B2B high-end segment, 
dude, you know, it's going to take like maybe a year, yeah, until the first minion come in, comes in, and then he gets paid the first time or something. Yeah, it doesn't work. So get a specialist and budget appropriately to the skill set the specialist brings in. It's really, really important to make this work. Okay, and don't just say, well, cold coin doesn't work because I paid a telemarketing agency 20,000 euros a year, you know, and um, it just simply didn't work. But, hmm, well, who you uh, expect to buy uh, for 20,000 euros a year, right? Um, so I'm sorry um, that this doesn't work, uh, I'm sure. But if you get a specialist here and you pay him 100k, he's going to make you maybe 5 million. All right, ongoing revenue. In the next year, again, ongoing revenue. You fill 5 million on top. All, all this stuff had already happened, right? And then don't make the mistake and say, well, now you made us 5 million for 100k, now we're only going to pay you even less, you know? Don't let the fire go out. When this guy gets on fire, um, heat it, keep it heated up, keep it, keep it light, keep it, um, keep the flame big, make the flame bigger. You know, these are important guys. Believe me, trust me. Um, you're gonna make this experience. Um, I can only, uh, from the depth of my heart, I can only recommend you to take this advice I'm giving here. In the, on YouTube, uh, on in the internet, consider these uh, these uh, these advisors. They are out of the daily business. Yeah, so um, I hope to help you and uh, give the video a thumb up. And here's the next video, very interesting for you. Maybe here you can subscribe to my channel. And then I'll see you next time. Um, take care and the best of all. Have good success. Um, bye bye.